Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be sharing about the movie Pig and some of the different themes and messages that the movie kind of conveys and delivers and how I tie those in with my Christian faith. So if that sounds exciting to you, make sure you stick around and we'll get started. Welcome once again, my name is Austin and this channel is all about helping you to dig deeper and go further to better understand faith and film and everything that's in between. If that sounds exciting to you, make sure you click the subscribe button so you do not miss out on any future content. Now, Pig is actually a movie I've been wanting to talk about on the channel for some time. I first watched the movie back in January and really liked it and picked up on a lot of different themes and messages throughout the film that I wanted to discuss. Uh, but before I did so, I wanted to get another rewatch in on the movie. So I picked the movie up on Blu-ray a couple of months back and uh, finally had a chance to be able to kind of dig into it, analyze the film a little bit more, watch it again. So I did that yesterday and now want to share my thoughts on the movie here. So I got that rewatch in yesterday and just loved the movie even more than the first time I watched it. There's so much to digest within this film on its messaging and its themes and how I was able to tie those in with different uh, biblical verses and different things to do with my faith. So really excited to jump into this one. For those not familiar on the movie Pig or just want a little bit of a refresher on it, the movie stars Nicolas Cage and he is uh, a truffle hunter. He lives in the woods by himself in a cabin with a truffle hunting pig. And so the two of them hunt truffles and then sell them to this one guy who sells them to restaurants throughout the city of Portland and that kind of surrounding area. So uh, one night uh, the pig is stolen from him and it's uh, he decides to return into the town, kind of confront areas from his past and try and find and get his pig back. I know it sounds like the setup of a John Wick type movie, but it is much more than that. It does have a somewhat similar structure, but it is not by any means an action movie and is much more of an exploration of loss and grief and forgiveness, and it's just beautiful thematically. So for those who may not have seen the movie uh, or care about spoilers, I am going to be discussing them here. If you want to check out the movie, it's currently streaming on Hulu, uh, so you can check it out there. But there's three main things that I want to talk about throughout this movie, most notably three specific scenes and kind of encounters that we have. Uh, the first one is a little bit more towards the beginning of the movie. It's not too long after Nicolas Cage and his business partner are in the city of Portland and are trying to track down what ended up happening with his pig. And so they go to this restaurant that turns out to be managed by one of the guys who used to cook underneath of Nicolas Cage's character back when he was a chef. And they kind of bring up memories of their past and stuff. So once Fenway realizes that it is the chef he used to cook under being Robin. Robin starts kind of confronting him about the business that he's running now versus what his original dreams were and just kind of starts challenging him of why he didn't follow his dreams and his passions uh, when he did know him. And I'm going to paraphrase a little bit but reading as close to as I can from the original dialogue. None of it's real because this and you aren't real. Why do you care about them? They don't even know you because you haven't shown them you. Every day you wake up with a less of you. You live your life for them and they don't even see you. You don't even see yourself. We don't get a lot of things to really care about. And this just is one of the most introspective lines I'd heard in a movie in a long time. Really making Finway look inside of himself and what he's doing with his life, not fulfilling those dreams and passions that he had. Uh, it reminded me of a verse in the Bible, uh, Galatians 1.10, For am I now seeking the approval of man or God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So obviously these are different circumstances of we're talking about someone who is running one business that not is not necessarily his most passion or his dream uh, versus a business that he's truly passionate and interested in. Uh, and then compared to the verse of a life lived for Christ or a life lived for self. But still, I think there's many things that kind of relate to and tie in on that of if you are doing something that you feel called to and you are passionate about that is honoring to Christ because he puts those drives and dreams in our hearts and our lives and gives us those desires in the first place. So to truly feel like we are doing something that we are meant to do, that God has called us on our life, 
is such a fulfilling aspect of our life. And like he said, you are losing a little bit of yourself each day, referring to every day is one less day that you have on this planet to do the things that you are called to and you are passionate about. So take advantage of that time and do what you truly want to do with your life that you feel God is calling upon you for. And then a little bit later in the movie, uh, I think kind of towards the beginning of the third act, uh, we get a almost opposite situation of another person that used to work under Chef Robin back during his time running a restaurant. And I believe the woman's name is Helen and she runs a bakery, but this used to be a regular restaurant uh, that Robin and his late wife Lori had ran. And this Helen worked underneath of them. And after Robin left, after the death of his wife, he, Helen takes over the business and converts it into a bakery. So <clears throat> obviously Robin notices this when he shows up and talks to her to ask her for some stuff. And they have a small exchange of words, not much is said, but you can tell that he's proud that she took what he left her and did something that she wanted to do with it that was more herself. Through that exchange, I was reminded of 1 Corinthians 7, 17, which says, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them, just as God has called them. So again, uh, fulfilling that calling on your life from God to do what he has called you to do. And so she feels that the restaurant is not necessarily her thing, but she is a baker. So she's going to do what she feels she is called to do. Through this exchange, I was also reminded of a parable that Jesus tells in the Bible. And that's the parable of the talents where uh, the master of a house leaves. And when he leaves, he entrusts the property to the servants that they would take care for and care for it. And so upon returning, depending on what each of those servants did with what was left for them, uh, the master was either kind of proud of what they accomplished and built up with what was left for them, or maybe more disappointed with them either not doing anything or making the situation worse. So it's a really interesting correlation. And I think a really different visualization of that kind of parable, as well as that verse that I mentioned, but it's really cool to see the contrast between the exchange earlier with Finway's character and then this later exchange with Helen and the bakery. So the kind of opposite ends of the spectrum of one is left and does something that he's not necessarily the most passionate about and needs confrontation about that and correction, where the other, he is proud of what she has done on her own. And as we reach kind of the final climax of the film, Robin gets to a point where he finds who has taken his pig and the circumstances of it all and turns out it is the father of his business partner. Obviously an act of evil and hurt intentionally was uh, committed against them in stealing this pig for their livelihood and their business. Uh, but instead of going for revenge, Robin chooses an act of love for someone who deliberately hurt him. And he cooks a meal that he had previously cooked for that man uh, that he knows would be meaningful to him. Again, I'm reminded of a very familiar verse, and that is Matthew 5, 44, which says, But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. There are so many things that Robin does throughout this film that are just obviously incredibly Christ-like in his actions of not necessarily the representation of Christ, but doing things in a way that would uh, honor Christ and what he has called for each of us as Christians in our lives as well. So I just loved this movie. There's so much more to it, even just beyond this theme of uh, doing what we are called to do by God, as well as forgiveness and showing love towards our enemies. There's so much more in this movie about grief and loss that I could go into, but those are the kind of themes and moments that I wanted to dig into in this video. I hope you enjoyed and appreciated it. I would love to hear yeah, more of your thoughts in the comments down below. Like I said, when it comes to loss and grief and how those would tie in uh, with many different Christian themes and aspects as well. So thank you for checking out this video. Like I said, it's one I've been wanting to do for some time now. If you have any more questions about my thoughts on this movie or my faith in general, I'd be happy to answer them in the questions down below. I'm by no means an expert, but would happily do my best to just share more about myself and my faith personally. So Thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.